Brother Al's sermon text is in Romans 2:16. In the day God um, in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. On heaven, I'm thankful for this day. I'm thankful for all the sermons. And please help Brother Gibbons' sermon to be good. Please help us to have ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I'd like to affirm to you tonight, brethren, that the gospel, the day of judgment, has everything to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let me just say this another way. The day of judgment has nothing to do with the adjudication of the law of Moses, which uh, seems to be commonly uh, thought of in the, in the world today. But uh, actually, you know, the, Jesus has, has taken the responsibility and all judgment has been committed to the son, right? So, so now, now Moses may be called to the witness stand to be sure, you know, but, but he, uh, he certainly is not gonna, the judgment has not been committed to Moses. So that's, we wanna. <clears throat> so our text, uh, we find our text in uh, Romans chapter two, uh, our primary text, Romans 2, 12 and, and uh, 16. But I'd like to back up to uh, verse six and uh, because this is, uh, is very critical. And here I want you to see the connection of the gospel with the day of judgment. And here, and we see this expressed in the words here in Romans chapter two, that God will render to every man according to his deeds, to them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality going to give to them eternal life okay let me just say that another way you know this is this would actually be a, a thought that uh, was probably regarded as heresy in in many circles because it says well it's really not based on what you do but see here it is based on what you do it's what you do with the gospel it has to do with what you do with Jesus See, see, see it actually, see the, 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 the judgment has been ratcheted up. It's been elevated to this level from the law of Moses to, to the matter of, of, the, of what you do with Christ. See, this is, uh, it's all about Jesus. It's not about Moses. See, it's not about the Ten Commandments. It's about what you do with Christ. See, so remember he said in John chapter 16, he said, when, he, when the comforter has come, right, he will reprove the world of sin and righteousness and judgment of sin because they believe not on me. See, not because they broke the law of Moses. Of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more. And of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. See, so there's, see it all, it all centers around Jesus and the gospel. So he will render to every man according to his deeds to them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life, but unto them who are contentious, do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil. And here evil has to do with reject, either accept, rejecting the gospel, rejecting Christ. See, that's, what's, that's evil. See, that's what's re regarded as evil. of the Jew first and also of the Gentile, but glory, honor, and peace to every man that worketh good to the Jew first and also to the Gentile, for there is no respect of persons with God. So the, the main focus we want to see is on Christ and the gospel. Now, Jesus knows what all men uh, have what, ha what they have done and what they have thought. See, he knows their innermost thoughts. See, he knows them. He already knows them. Every man, every last one of the sons of Adam that have ever lived, see, Jesus knows, he knows them. He knows them. See, it's essential that, uh, and this, of course, this, uh, this magnifies, this well helps us to see the, the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. He, he, he knows every, every last one of them, not just from an external 
perspective, but he knows the thoughts and intents of their hearts. He knows every one, knows every last one of the sons of Adam. So here in our text, in uh, Romans chapter 2, verses 12 and 16, I'm skipping over the, the parenthetical phrase here. He says, for as many as have sinned without law shall perish without law, and as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law in the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Okay, so now let's just talk about the secrets of men so, and, and according to my gospel. So the, uh, you know the, the scripture, Moses and the prophets, in, in several places talk about God shall render to every man according to his works and according to his deeds and according to his ways. See, so, so just that, see, just in order, you, you see, no, in order for God to, ju to be able to do that, see, he would have to know men's innermost thoughts. I mean, that just, I mean, that just is like common knowledge, you know. And actually, the people of God, you are, we already know this. We sense this. We sense this, that he knows our, our innermost thoughts. All judgment has been committed under the sun, and God has given authority to, for, to him to execute judgment because he is the son of man. Now Christ's judgment of the secrets of men is essential so that, the, that no proverbial stone be left unturned when eternity begins. All judgment has been committed to the Son, as we said. Now, I want to um, just talk, say a few things about uh, the secrets of men here. Now, every man has been created with a mind and a heart and a conscience in which secret things are to be wisely and discreetly kept. Some things that are stored therein are a profit to men and, and to be, are, are to be disclosed and, and shared. Are not to, they're not to be to disclosed and shared except with discretion. Every man and woman has been entrusted uh, of God with a stewardship of the things that are secretly held by him. Now let's talk about this inward monitor of the soul. Now every man has an inward monitor, and that's your conscience. You know, this is a, this is like uh, related to the judgment. See, so, but he, each one of us, God created every man with a conscience. You know, you, it's it's you're like your inner, inner self that makes judgments. You you judge, and and so this uh, conscience is imperfect, and yet at the same time it is effectual. It's an inward, an effectual inward monitor of the soul. It is effectual for the purpose that it was created. It is limited in what it knows. It has the capacity to excuse or accuse one's thoughts and actions. It can be defiled or it can be cleansed or purged. It can be underdeveloped or it can be overdeveloped, as Romans 14, the Romans 14 scenario represents. Or it can be developed in accordance with one's faith so that it reasons according as God does, particularly with regard to the putting away of sin by the Lord Jesus Christ. Holding faith and a good conscience, as Paul said, right? Now our text in Romans chapter two and verse 16 unquestionably declares that there is another, capital A, very pervasive, all pervasive, all knowing monitor of the soul. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ himself. See, he's, he's the one who searches the reins and the hearts. But Re Revelation, remember he said, I, he said to one of the churches in the, in the Revelation, right? I search the reins and the hearts. Uh, and uh, so, so it, there, this one is making just and righteous assessments in every one of the sons of Adam, including those, of course, who have become the sons of God through their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and obedience to the gospel. 
This all-knowing monitor of the soul is none other than the, our Lord Jesus Christ, as we've already said. This can either be the most com comforting thought or the most alarming thought. You know, if you, you, you just depend, it really depends on where you stand with regard to the atonement, right? So if you're on, if you're on the right side of the atonement and your, your, your sins have been covered, see, this can be a very comforting thought that God knows even the, the worst things. You know, even the worst things about you. Some of, some of you have shared in your testimony some of the worst things that, and, and yet, see, now God, we know that God knows this, but this can be a comforting thought that he knows it. He knows it because it's, uh, it's, it's covered, right? It's, it's forgiven, right? It's pardoned, see? Let's see if uh, for those that uh, are not, have not been, been pardoned, see, this is a very frightening thought. The glorified Christ knows the inward thought of every last one of the sons of, of Adam. Now God has secrets and secret places that are known only to him, but men do not have secrets that are known only to them. See, now men, men may, they have secrets, but see, it's, uh, they're really, see, God already knows them. They're not hid from God. Maybe hid from your neighbor for a while, unless you disclose them, but, but see, now God, he already knows them. If you have any secrets, you know, you want to make sure that they're good secrets or that they've been secrets that are taken care of, you know, but, but he, he already knows that. Jesus knows it. He already knows it. Think about the secret things belonging to the Lord. Deuteronomy 29, 29. Now that sin has been put away by the Lord Jesus Christ, this, uh, God has been has liberty to, uh, to, to uh, share more things with the sons of men, although particularly redeems the, redeems son, his redeemed sons and daughters, right? So, so actually the secret things are, there's, there's fewer secret things. You know, there's always going to be things that God, only, only the Father knows, you know, that we, even in eternity, there's going to be things that are, you know, the, 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 the son shall feed them and lead them under living fountains of water. There'll all be th always be things that we'll be learning about the Father, but, but, see the, the, but see, God wants to reveal. He wants to reveal uh, so much now that sin has been put away. See, so there's, a, there's, there's fewer secret things now in these last days than there were in the time of Moses and the prophets. The secret place of the Most High is only for those who are granted access to dwell there. Now, thinking person, now if you think about this, this is Psalm 91.1, if you think about this, you, you'll, you, you'll come to the conclusion, if you're thoughtful, that this secret place has to be the Lord Jesus Christ himself. It can't be just a place. See, there, there would be no place that would be safe to be in God's presence apart from the Lord Jesus Christ. See, so, so Jesus is that secret place. See, we're, we're hid with Christ in God. See, that's, uh, we have this in Colossians, you know, the word here. This. So believers are hid with Christ in God. And then think about this. The Lord seeth not as man seeth, for he looketh not on the outward appearance, but he looks on the heart. So... All right, so let's move on here. I, the Lord, search the, the heart and the reins to give every man according as his work shall be. So the, to give every man according to his ways, and accord, uh, he impl implies that, that he has perfect knowledge of every man's thoughts and, and intents. See, God knows your thoughts and intents, not just your thoughts, but he, he, he understands what you're purposing. He understands your affections. Jesus understands, he knows that. He knows if your affections are turned in the right direction or if they're not. He knows your intentions, if they're in the right in direction or not. See, that's why, that's why we need Jesus to be the judge, see, because not everybody, see, now, from, if you look at things from the, just the outside, you may see people, people that have done maybe the same thing ex from the outward appearance, they may be judged differently according to, the, to what was in their heart. See, what, what's, what's actually their purpose or what, how much they know or, or things of that sort. So, Amen. 
Now think about secret faults and secret sins. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults. Now uh, there are, we, we all have secret faults. You know, there's things that, that God knows about us. He knows. He, the Lord Jesus Christ knows. He knows what, he knows about, like when we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins, but we can only confess the ones that we are aware of, right? We, but, if, but if he brings them to our awareness, we confess them, right? But there's things... And, and of course, if we're in, in, out of concern, we say, well, we want the Lord to, conf to cleanse us even from secret faults, things that we're not aware of. Now think about this, uh, this matter of secret sins. And this is found in, uh, in Psalm 90 and verse eight. This, th he says, thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. Now this is a scary thought when you think about it. Now, if you think about Psalm 90, this is a, is actually a representation of the of the way things would be apart from Christ. When I mean, you think about, you know, he uh, just read Psalm 90 with that in mind. Just the it's it's really a, uh, I won't take the time to read it, but but it's it's really a. Uh, I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm just going to let you you read it on your own. But secret sins are sins that are that men are not aware of. Or completely, or completely aware, be, because of unaware, because of ignorance. Many of the expressions in Psalm 90 give a little preview of what what this would be like, uh, not to have uh, have have sins to be our, our sins covered by the Lord Jesus Christ. Now think about this word in uh, in in Job. He says, are the consolations of God small with thee? Well, if they are, Jesus knows it. And he knows the reason why. And he knows how to remedy the situation. Amen. See, he knows that. Jesus knows it. See? So, is there any secret thing with thee? Well, we, we, know, that, we know that he knows it, and of course we... If it's, uh, it's something that needs to be confessed, we confess it and, and, uh, and all will be well. All right, so I, I want to uh, take some time here to contrast tribunals and courts of law in this present world with the day of judgment. And if you'll just bear with me a little in my folly here. But the judge, you know, in the... When we think about the judge in the courtroom, judges in this present world would have to have prior knowledge of and no or no perfect knowledge of the case uh, of individuals they are presiding for. Let me just say that again uh, without looking at my notes. You know, judges, uh, when a judge adjudicates a case in this world, see, he it's, it's like he doesn't really know, he only knows the person from the outside, right? And, and like he, he doesn't know the person's history. And, but see, Jesus knows. Amen. See, he, he, knows, he knows from the inside. Yeah. And he knows the thoughts and the intent. So he already knows. Amen. So, he, so it's, we're, we're, it's a totally different situation. And then think of the courtroom. See, now you go to a judge, a, a courthouse, and some courthouses have like several different courtrooms, but... See, when this courtroom is going to, when, when we're ushered into this courtroom, there's only going to be one, right? And all, all the, the, the sons of Adam are going to be present, Lord. And, and there's, there's not going to be any exiting or, uh, until, until, it's, uh, until it's determined, right? Until the time comes that, uh, that, that men should uh, depart one side or the other. So, and then... Let's think about uh, the defense table, the defense team, a lawyer uh, or team of lawyers uh, hired by the defendant to plead uh, his or her case. But on the day of judgment, there shall be no defense attorney except for the Lord Jesus Christ himself. 
See, he's going to be the defense attorney for those that have believed on his name. See, he's our advocate, right? So, so it's, it's all, it's everything. In other words, what I'm saying is everything is wrapped up in Christ. See, it's in all these things, I'll, I'm just telling you, giving you a preview of what I'm saying here, but it all has to do with Jesus is, is it's, it's all, it's all centered in Jesus. See, so it's, it all has to do with him. And then the prosecution table, see, it's the same. See, there is no prosecution table in the, in the day of judgment, see, because it, but all judgment has been consit, con, committed to the son. You see what I mean? So he's, he, will, he, will prop, he will properly prosecute the cases that need to be prosecuted, and he will, uh, he will uh, defend the ones that are, are to be defended. There's no jury box. There's no jury on the day of judgment. See, it's all committed to the son. He already knows. There's no need for a jury because, because it's already, he already knows. See, the, the day of judgment is not going to be a, a time of, deter, of, uh, of trying to determine who, whether the person is guilty or not. It's, it's going to be a revelation. It's a revelation of the righteous judgment of God. So, so, it's, uh, so that's, that's the way things are. The witness stand. Think about the witness stand. Now, Witness stands in this world are used to determine either a guilt or innocence. But, but see, if there, if there are witnesses called like the, the Queen of the South, she says she's going to rise up in the judgment, right? And, and maybe some of the cities that Jesus talked about, they're going to rise up in the judgment. So, but see, that they, they, it will not be the, the, for the purpose of determining guilt or innocence. See, it's already, it's, that's already settled. See, it's, it's going to be just to corroborate what the, what the king has already said, right? It's just going to, they're going to just, they're just going to demonstrate that what he said is, is righteous and true altogether. So. And then the verdict in the earth, the verdict is to be read and pronounced uh, is a determination by men to the best of their ability and knowledge. But in the day of judgment, see, the verdict has already been determined. See, it's, it's already been determined. He's, uh, so, and the bailiffs, see, you know, bailiffs in this world are, are there to, to maintain order or to bring people in, see, but there's not going to be any need for bailiffs except maybe the holy angels. They're going to, maybe they will, but see, even in, as far as maintaining order in the, in the, in the courtroom, see, all, Jesus is just going to scatter away all evil with his eyes. He's just going to look. All he has to do is look, see, and there's not going to be any disorderliness on the day of judgment. So that's a... Uh, Let's think about some miscellaneous thoughts regarding the day of judgment. Now, I want to keep in mind, see, that, that the day of judgment really has to do with, with glorifying the Son and glorifying the gospel. See, it's really, it really is about that. So, uh, what, some, so when you think about the things that I'm reading here, uh, think about it in that light that, uh, that we're, some, issue, some of these issues may not, they may not be relevant because, because for that purpose. But for example, Simeon and Levi, remember, they had a wicked secret that Jacob could not bear to consider. He said, O oh, my soul, come not into their secret. But this will be no secret in the day of judgment, see? And, and, it, and, and actually, even if it comes up, if it, this matter does come up, see, it will come up because it, it bears on the, this issue of the gospel. See, it, if, if, it has a, if it has pertinence to that, it will, it will come up in the day of judgment, see? So uh, the, all, everything that... that re, Everything that is brought up in the day of judgment, see, is going to have to do with what men did with Jesus, see, and, and what they did with the gospel, see, and, and so. All right, so let's talk about some, some things here, some secret things pertaining to the Beatitudes. Now, some secrets of the children of God even of those inheriting the kingdom of God are seen in the Lord's Beatitudes. Each, of the, each Beatitude reveals a treasure trove of secrets hidden from the eyes of other men that will be made manifest in the day when God judges the world by the, judges the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. Now just think about this for example. Now this is, blessed are the poor in spirit. That's something that the poor in spirit know and Jesus knows. He knows it now, right? He knows it right now. How about blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness? See, yeah, see, you, you know if you do, and, and, but Jesus does too. See, he knows it right now. He knows it. He knows if you do. 
And blessed are the meek. See, that's something that, well, I suppose we don't want to, you know, Jesus, Jesus will, he knows if men are meek and we, if you're submissive to, to his word, see the, we certainly, we, we don't boast about being meek, but we, we aspire to be meek. We want to, we want, we, this is a very attractive, uh, uh, something very attractive to the people of God. So we don't boast about it, but we certainly aspire that this would be part of us, that this would be us, right? Blessed are the meek. But that's something that Jesus knows. He knows. See, and these are... And then, uh, blessed are the merciful, blessed are the pure in heart, blessed are the peacemakers, blessed are they that uh, are persecuted for righteousness' sake, Blessed are they when are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you for my sake. So now think about this. Now think about testimonies on the streets of glory from this perspective. You may someone may ask, well, when up there he said, Well, how did you how did you come in? Now we all came in by the by the, by the one way, right? The, he, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But we're talking about, you know, under that heading, right? How did you, how did you come in? You came, well, I was, uh, I was hungering and thirsting after righteousness, and, and I was filled. I've been filled, right? So just think about, you see what I mean from, from that perspective? See how that, see this, this is actually, the Beatitudes are actually a preview of, what, of what's up ahead, right? So the, this is a description of the, of, the, of the subjects of the kingdom of God. So, and then this, uh, the testimony of Isaiah the prophet, for, for thus saith the Lord, the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, eternity whose name is holy I dwell in the high and holy place now this is a good thing to know about God because it's it's see Jesus is the express image of this himself see so he's uh, Jesus is just like this see he's like this he says I dwell with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. And he says, to this man will I look even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit and trembleth at my word. So those are, those are things to, that are, are very attractive to, to those that are, are, are seeking after glory and honor and immortality. Let's think about, uh, just in closing, the, se the secrets of men as they pertain to your private prayer. So you remember when you pray, it says your father that seeth in secret. I was really encouraged when I thought about that. You know, so I, I've actually been encouraged to, to pray along these lines, you know, that, uh, you know, my father, you, the father who sees in secret, you know, he shall reward you openly. He will. That's a, that's a good thing to know when you pray. Even even if sometimes it seems like he's not not answering right away. See, it's but see, he said that's what that's what Jesus said. Your father which seeth in secret shall reward you openly. So, I'm going to stop there, and uh, we'll make room for Brother Given to come up here at, at the appointed time. So, thank you.